when he's just landed. Pull back chain and we can get into this. It rotates like that. Contralaterally crosses over a monkey dance party. Brothers and sisters, we are well and truly in a new era of physical education. And as someone who considers myself very much a true seeker and in the movement space, I'm here today to explain to you why I feel that landmine training done intelligently could be an absolute revolution in strength training and this could be the early days of something that's to come. Now when I say landmine training, I'm not talking your average fitness magazine or fitness blogs article on landmines, which quite frankly looking around, most of them have no idea how to utilize the unique characteristics of the landmine to create an absolute beast of a body. Okay, so reason number one, forwards intent. If you'll join me on two feet with a nice forward fold, but sticking back, where do you feel what muscles kick in? Probably feel a little bit the hamstrings, maybe top of the calves, maybe some here. Now, from this position, if we just lean forward 10 degrees, what do you notice kicks in? Well, the toes, the feet kick in, 10 toes, deep, 10 toes down start to kick in. And as that happens, you might feel even more recruitment in the back chain. Now, as I mentioned previously, if you look at anatomy trains, the whole fascial line, the superficial back line, which goes down all back of the head, the back muscles around here, wrapping around the muscles like sausage tubes, connects in to the ball of the foot. It doesn't end at the heels. So as we go onto the balls here, this whole system comes online a little bit more and you can feel it if you've given that a go, I'm sure you have. Now, example number two, if you join me over here, I don't have a squat rack in my living room, in the door frame. If you drive up, driving from the legs, right, feel what muscles are recruiting there. All right, maybe some thighs, maybe some glutes. Whole body feels a little bit compressed. Now, from the door frame, find a wall that you can lean into and simply drive into it. What do you notice in your body compared to that? We're on the balls of the feet, the back chain lights up a bit more. Even the back becomes more rounded as the whole body kind of lengthens out to drive forwards as opposed to this compression. When we're on our heels and we're underneath the weight and we're driving forwards, more of the system comes online. So Tim, how does that relate to the landmine? Well, I have my trusty stick mobility stick right here as my living room landmine. Most articles you might see online will be heels down, doing squats like that or some version of like RDL. Here's how we utilize the landmine. It's anchored into the floor and it is a stiff bar. And we do think about this forwards intent. We can light up the whole back chain and we can get into this kind of full body, full system driving forwards action, not just grounded on the heels going up and down. And this is why I see things like sled pushes and, and hack squats becoming more and more popular again today. I'm not sure people understand why, but with a sled push, it's that same thing you're driving forwards with the whole body every single step. Both great exercises. Point number two, something I'm calling left and right side springs. So again, on our feet, if you take a step, what is the first thing that you do? The first two or three things you do when you take any step with your body? Okay, you might lift the leg. Before that even, you start to lean forwards. Naturally, we lean forwards. And the third thing we do, lift the leg, lean forwards, shift our weight, over to that side. We don't take our first steps like this. So you've got that weight lean, that's the forward intent, right? Weight leaning, we're onto the ball of the other foot. We shift our weight, we put our ribs, our head, kind of over that foot. And so human locomotion, we call this kind of a contralateral action. So contralateral action is kind of you looking at the body with this X across the middle of it. And when one side shortens, the other side lengthens, and then I take a step the other way, and the opposite happens, vice versa over there. Now imagine with me for a second, it's the Olympic finals, you're on the running track and you're about to run the 800 meter final. So, how are you stood? Nope, you're not on the floor. 800 meters, we're on our feet now, right? Are you stood, both feet parallel, looking for the gun to go off, elbowing with your mates? No, you're not. You're gonna have one foot further forward than the other. You're gonna have your weight over that leg, ready to go, ready to take that first step, right? That's how we're starting the 800 meters. And obviously, even in 400, 200, 100, what are we, are we, are we starting like that? Or are we starting both feet like that? No, you have one, one side is coiled, ready to go. So Tim, how does this apply to the landmine? Well, my single favorite exercise with the landmine, if you only do one exercise, this is the one I'd recommend you do. The landmine clean starts just like this. Coiled on one side, kind of like Terminator, when he's just landed in this Terminator squat, 
my feet aren't level and I'm over cord on one side not too dissimilar 800 meter race landmine clean right what I'm doing I'm driving out of my left side my left leg my left side is all shortened like a spring when I'm short I've got potential to lengthen so my shoulders near my hip my hips driving forward my legs shortened I'm going up and then the weight's shifting and what am I in here I'm in a right side coil so I've exploded up and I've shifted the weight. Now you might think, why can't I just do a single leg RDL? Romanian deadlift, right? Is a good exercise or Bulgarian squats. Two differences with the landmine clean from those exercises. Well, if we take a look at the Bulgarian split squat, my shoulders, my hips are very level. If I'm gonna sprint off the marks like that, compared to like that. What looks more like a runner about to run a race, that or that? Okay, so my initial spring, this is about acceleration and explosivity, zero to 100 or whatever speed you go to. That's what's fun in the body, acceleration. Ask a kid, ask a dog. They don't wanna run 10K, they just wanna run fast for a short period of time and how quickly can they get up to speed? <laughs> this is about that, I'm telling you. So, there's this slight coil going on. When I say coil, you imagine a spring when we compress the spring, it rotates like that, and then it has potential to unwind. We're thinking about that even down to the foot, right? The foot, my knee is out to the left, I'm rotated in, into the hip, coiled, ready to spring. The second reason this exercise has more functional carrier but than those exercises for athleticism is weight shifting. So, when I'm cleaning, I'm coiled, I'm extending, this whole left side is extending up. And then I shift to the other side. When I run, I accelerate off my left leg. And then I'm on my right leg, right? So it trains this funnel of energy that travels up like an energy wave through the body and then contralaterally crosses over this middle line onto that other side for us to go again. This is why the infinity symbol rules overall in terms of movement patterns. It's perpetual motion, weight shift, weight shift, weight shift, without humpty dumpty. And there's sequencing to this. It's not just everything at once, like a, a monkey dance party, you know? It's up, shift, up, shift. There's a beautiful rhythm in the body to movement, right? There's a rhythm, rocking and a rolling. Watch any single sprinter off the 100 meter mark, front on, and you will see coil, weight shift, head over foot, head over foot. There is a pathway for this. We can grease the groove. The landmine clean, done well with the right cueing, is weightlifting on that natural locomotive pathway. You wanna experience this for yourself? Come join me on the stairs. So I'm gonna run up the stairs two different ways. In your head, or if you try along, I want you to decide which one looks or feels more effortless. So yeah, something you can apply straight away if you try Landman Clean. And the third reason on this list that I've had to condense down so it's not just a 30 minute rambling of me and my love for landmines is the core power aspect of it. If you ignore the legs and ignore the arms and just look at what happens in the core. So we have to go, no, we can't go shirts off. I've got my microphone on. This is what's happening with no landmine. I'm shortened on this side, hips forward, and I'm going up and I'm shortening on this side, right? The amount of muscles activated here, there's so much muscle above the hip supporting it and supporting the shoulders and the ribs above it, right? That just doing sit-ups and planks and side planks doesn't give us this kind of salsa hip control where the hips work like a gyroscope. So with the landmine clean, we're getting this hip drive to hip drive using all of this fat pack of loin right here, right? The ability to come here and extend, forgetting the glutes and the hamstrings, what can the muscle here do to contribute to a powerful 
explosive step. So we call this proximal force. This is very focused around here. And there's, even though it looks funky in the beginning, the arms are having to do big movements, right? It looks like there's a lot going on, there's a lot of motion, but that's because there's so much going on at the core. And obviously, think about simple physics, when something rotates in the middle, think of a roundabout the playground. You can be going on the outside at a normal speed. You go to the middle and suddenly you're going really fast. So when things are moving fast in the middle of a circle, things at the extreme move a lot quicker. So that is why it looks like with the landmine, there's all this big elbow action going on because we're learning to steer the ribs, the hips, the shoulders. That's why they call it the spinal engine, baby. Now you see a guy flying around his living room and you might think this guy's a bloody weirdo, which is fine. And where's the science? You want science, there's, you know, if you want that like intellectual book smart side, I would recommend this. Me, I'm the guy, I want to feel it. I want to be in the field of play moving, exploring it for myself. But if you want that side, recommend checking that out. Yes, it may look strange in the beginning. And when I posted the video the other day of 12 explosive landmine exercises, and I was so excited to share it, and I'm feeling this stuff in my body. I'm going, wow, can't wait to share this. And well, it got crickets. Hardly anyone viewed it, <laughs> and rightly so. It's my job to, to explain why and then show, right? Dragos, who's a member of the School of Biomechanics, posted in our Telegram group chat, him playing with the landmine recently and just said how good he felt just going for a walk after one landmine session. And it sparked me to try it again. And since getting back into it, as your brother, let me say, it's a very real experience. You go, do a series of landmine cleans, maybe some jerks as well. You feel strong on your feet, you feel explosive and it comes from the core. So you can do the other stuff as well. I'm not saying this to say, disregard all barbell training, don't do that. Do the bilateral stuff as well. When you're doing bilateral stuff, my right side can anchor off my left and my left side can anchor off my right so I can get maximum strength in one plane. It's just not all planes and it just doesn't all relate to gait. It doesn't all have this funnel through locomotion. You can do that training and this training and have the full package, the proximal and the distal. Other things I love about this is it's precise. Again, it might look funky, but when you start to feel it, you feel these pathways. It's like a secret walkway that's overgrown in your body that's not been used. And when you start to grease the groove of these patterns, it's like you're trimming back the hedges and this pathway, this groove of movement pattern within the body starts to open up. As well as that, I find there's less injury risk because it's the full system, the full body. There's less hot spots that I find with traditional strength training. There's often little hot spots in the body that get stressed before other areas. Then when you up the weight, those are the first bolts to pop off. With this, full system going, you go in a bit lighter and it doesn't require as much mobility. It works with the mobility you currently have for these positions. It's like 3D barbell training for a 3D body. Weightlifting with direct carryover to locomotion. Now, if this has gassed you up 5% that it gasses me up, then I'm gonna leave a link down below to my Landmine Clean tutorial. It's a private link. It's from my Landmine's 3D course, which I just released on the School of Biomechanics, but I don't want you to have to go all that way to get the benefits of this. If you just wanna do landmine clean, check that link down below. Obviously, if you wanna learn more, other exercise with a landmine, or just join our community and have chats with me, recommend joining the School of Mind Mechanics, but no obligation. The landmine clean's right there, give it a go, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Godspeed.